Hong Kong, one of the most densely populated territories in the world, home to approximately 7.5 million people, breathtaking mountains, and the city that has the most skyscrapers on our planet. And over the next two days, we're gonna take you with us as we explore the best and the most budget-friendly things there is to do here in this special region of the People's Republic of China, that is Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a place I honestly don't really know much about, but it has been on my list of places to go for years now. There was something just really appealing to me to come here and check the place out. And it's pretty much what I kind of expected based on pictures and videos I had seen online. It is intensely built up, hugely populated. The buildings are massive, if you can see behind me the whole way down the street. And everywhere you go, it is just dodging around people. We have just come from Japan and we thought it was busy, but I think this has taken it to the next level. Our first day here in Hong Kong, we are going to go over and check out the Mon Co area. There's loads of different markets over there that I want to just go and have a nosy at. Hopefully we'll find some local food as well. And then later on today, we're hoping to check out one of the many, many viewpoints all across the city. The city is surrounded by mountains, so we're going to go on a little bit of a hike and hopefully catch a beautiful sunset. Hong Kong clearly a wee bit more expensive than most of the other countries here in Asia and for us it's a wee bit out of our budget but we're going to put that to the test over the next couple of days anyway and we just picked ourselves up two uh, honey lattes out of 7-Eleven and they even had a wee sneaky deal on it was buy one get one free so two lattes for $18. Ooh. Cheers! And on that Hong Kong have their own currency which is the Hong Kong dollars and it looks pretty cool. Our personal favourite has to be the $10 note. It just looks like you're gonna have a party. Like look at that. <laughs> and this is the Fa Yon market. It has a little bit of everything going on. Some bags, some clothes, some jewelry. And it goes all the way down here. This place is just filled with character. It is actually very, very cool to walk around. Loads of colour as well. However, all the stalls are just sound like the typical markety kind of stuff, all souvenirs, suitcases, clothes, handbags. A lot of crap to be honest with you, but like it's very cool to walk around at the same time. We do enjoy it. I absolutely love the visual that's going on right behind me. Up to, up at the top you can see all of the flats that I'm sure once upon a time were very colourful, really well maintained. But now they're a little bit more faded, a little bit grubby, but they're really authentic looking. All the people are hanging out their clothes and then you've got the market right behind me as well. So nice. It just keeps on going. Like when does it stop? <laughs> I'm going to look up to see where the next stop is. We're looking to go to a ladies market, which is an area that is that we just walked through. <laughs> that was the ladies market right there. It's an area full of like handbags and stuff. It's like meant to be a cool location to go check out. Turns out we just seen it. Boom, done. So first impressions of Hong Kong and of the area that we're in so far, I really like it. There's loads of markets, things on the street, food to pick up. People are really friendly as well. I was a little bit worried about the communication barrier, but a lot of people speak English and even whenever I try to speak a little bit, like what, I can't even remember what, no. Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember How do you say hello? <laughs> even whenever I say ni hao, they're always like, oh, she tried. <laughs> <laughs> God loves a trier. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I expected it to feel more Chinese-y in a sense. That might be a really like bad like stereotype and image I had of Hong Kong in my head, but I just felt like it was gonna feel more like I was in China nearly, and it just doesn't at all. It's just really, I don't even know how to describe it. It feels a wee bit like you've taken a wee element out of loads of different Asian cities and just threw it all together here in Hong Kong, and it's a real mashup of a bit of everything, to be honest. Look at that, not too bad. Our first we buy at the market, got ourselves a wee bunch of five bananas to keep us going. And they were only 10,000, 10,000, 10 dollars. Not too bad, about a quid. while things are actually pretty well priced we've been in the markets we've been in a few different shops and everything seems really within budget and really affordable this market in particular is really really good but I think we'll be okay here in Hong Kong
over this past six months, we've spent most of our time in Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, and South Korea, which is a full series we haven't posted yet, but we will be very soon. But Hong Kong feels like the most ruthless country out of all of them. And we're only here, and that's kind of just a first impression. I could be completely wrong, but so far we have seen traffic being chaotic and drivers just kind of doing whatever they want in the road. We have seen a lot of people shouting and kind of pushing at each other. It looks like they're nearly going to start an argument. The streets are definitely a lot grubbier than all of the other countries, but it kind of is in like a really cool, characteristic kind of way. It's just adding to the city. And yeah, there's just a few things that I just feel like it's a bit more of a ruthless, of a ruthless place, but that is a complete first impression. Like, as I said, we have just got here. I could be completely wrong. We'll wait and see what it's like later on at night time though. It is dinner time and we have found this wee buffet style place that looks very, very good. And I think affordable, don't know, we're trying to figure out the menu and couldn't really figure it out, but we'll have to wait and see, but it looks too good to mess up, so we're gonna get a wee buffet. So all of this food just cost us 71 Hong Kong dollars, which might sound like a lot of money, but it's actually not. And look at the absolute this we've got we've got a lot of this one's all pork and this one's all chicken it smells and looks so good we had so much choice up at the top there and the women were so lovely so let's get stuck in <laughs> so slippery look that would have stained yeah. your clothes <laughs> oh. <laughs> hong kong i love you so far this is amazing from the streets and the people the food and the cost it's nowhere near as expensive as i thought it was going to be what a place all good things that was so so tasty if you're in the mong Khan area definitely come and check these guys out lam hing i think they're called really really good but now i think it's time and i don't really even want to say it but i think it's time to go and attempt to do this hike Hong Kong has a lot of mountains and a lot of hiking trails so we definitely want to check out some of them whenever we were here and the one we've actually decided to do this evening is over on Hong Kong Island so the complete other direction from where we last were when we had the camera out this is the Victoria Peak climb or trail that we're doing at the moment I'm not gonna lie to you it's tough if you can't tell from the sweat on our faces it's very very tough <laughs> it's difficult we got a bus from the market area where we were at earlier, the whole way over to Hong Kong Island, started walking from the central. We've been going for, for like 45 minutes now. And it's been all uphill. All uphill, but it better be worth it for the view of the peak right out over the city. There is actually a tram that you can get the whole way up to the peak as well but we decided that we needed a little bit of exercise we've been doing a lot of eating recently and it is so nice to see this side of hong kong hong kong is completely surrounded by forest even though it's a huge huge city so it's such a cool contrast from up here Ooh, we have come some height and i think we're almost there we have a little bit more of a hill, so we may as well keep going. But what a few! Oh my days, so we have made it to the top. The views are incredible from what we can see so far. You can see right out over the city, the huge high rise buildings and then the jungle is just absolutely taking over loads of it as well. And right behind us here is the observation deck, which is this really unique kind of shape of a building. It is massive as well. So I think we're gonna head up there and see if we get a better view. What a view. Incredible. And just in time for sunset. So what I wasn't expecting that when we got to the top here that we were going to come across this. It looks like it's a full shopping complex but I actually think it's just loads of different restaurants. There's the tram over here and the view from the top is absolutely beautiful but there's so many people. Like so many people. So we opted not to go up to the observation deck because it was actually like $70 each and we actually found a balcony that was just outside a restaurant that was free of charge and had a great view and now we've made our way outside we have just found a bus stop. 
that did not exist. When we looked up getting a bus up to here, we could not get one. We did enjoy the hike up, but there's a bus right here going back to Central. So we're gonna be getting it. We have had a blast on our first day here in Hong Kong and we will see you tomorrow. Good morning, it is day two for us here in Hong Kong. And this morning we are in the central area over on Hong Kong Island, close to where we're staying. And we have come out for some breakfast at the minute. We've come to a wee food center area, which we have been recommended to come to for a very special Hong Kong food. And that's French toast. <laughs> Something I didn't know was like a big dish here, French toast, turns out it actually is, but I believe Hong Kong have their own special twist on it. So we have got just got our order in here. This is a very interesting wee area where and it's very funny, it's like a school kind of canteen vibe. You come and you get a wee table, you sit down and then you put up your hand to order and a wee lady comes over and takes your order. So we're just watching people as like they're ordering, there's just like hands going up in the air everywhere and honestly it's just giving us such a wee laugh this morning. But I'm so excited to get tucked into their breakfast and I believe it's going to be pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The moment of truth, our French toast has just come down after waiting for nearly one full hour for some toast. This place is flat out and it's only part of our order. We got the traditional French toast. We also have ordered some cheese, some ham toast and also a bottled ice milk tea which seems to be a thing here. Everybody's drinking them so we just had to get one. This however looks really really good. French toast traditionally is just like bread fried off in egg but this also has a slab of butter and loads of condensed milk on top. So let's see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> It's pretty good. It's like savory, sweet, typical French toast, toast and egg. And yeah, drizzle with some condensed milk. Oh wow, that's lovely, that's really, really nice. It is quite literally soaked in condensed milk. Amazing. <laughs> is the French toast good? Yes. Is it worth the wait here? To be honest, no. Hong Kong is extremely hilly, but something really cool is that there is this escalator system, which is called the Central Mid-Level Escalator. That's fun fact of the day, the longest outdoor covered escalator system in the world at 800 meters long, and it's gonna take us all the way up to the top that we don't have to sweat while we are commuting between now and our next destination. <laughs> And that next destination is the Zoological and Botanical Gardens, which is right here in the central area in Hong Kong, where there is loads of different animals. This is a free park you can come into. There's meant to be different types of monkeys, meerkats, reptiles, loads of things going on. Yay. So it's like a wee free mini zoo. <laughs> exactly. Oh my day. I see monkeys. Look at the oh my God, they're so lanky. Look oh, at them. I love the color of him. <gasps> look at him go, look at him go. How's it hanging, buddy? <laughs> wow. These guys are so strange looking. Ne neither of these monkeys I've ever seen before, and they are so interesting. I was just saying, Owen, the like fur on this monkey nearly looks like a peacock feather. Like, it doesn't look monkey-like at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has a big beard as well. <laughs> I have never seen any of these kind of monkeys before. Listen and the to noise them. that's coming out of them is crazy. <laughs> They've literally just started this. We were like, what in the hell is going on around the corner? There's these two guys singing a wee song. <laughs> Potentially the loudest zoo I've ever been to. Ah, that's so funny. <laughs> it literally sounds like sirens are going off from every direction right now. Ah, I actually believe it's being Oh my god! Hey, buddy! <laughs> my oh my dears, I just seen him last second. He's not making the noise. He's definitely not making the noise, but I have just seen a few of the zookeepers coming out and I believe it's feeding time and that's ah. what's going on. <laughs> Everyone's getting very excited. Look at this guy. When it feeding time. But look at him. Hey buddy, aren't you so fast? I feel like I actually have to say this because it's a wee bit like ridiculous what's going on right now but there is no sound effects that we have added in here. All of these noises are genuinely all the monkeys just going buck mad. It is wild. I don't think I've ever heard monkeys no. be this loud vocal. and shouting and focal. Yeah. It is just 
It's like this is the playing sound effects and the speakers, and they're not. I love it. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. There's an orangutan right there. Oh my days. Sorry, Limbert, we're coming back. Goodness. Look at him go, look at him go. Whoa. Normally we're not a big fan of going to like zoos and things like that. We always feel like really bad for the animals when they're like caged in. And we've been to quite a few of these like free botanical kind of zoological areas that have been not cared for in the right way and the animals don't really look like they're looked after and they're all very sad looking. These guys, however, look like they're having a blast. All of the animals are so happy looking and there's loads of staff out washing all of the cages. The places are really well kept. They're just, they've just been fed. That's what all the noise is about. And honestly, it looks like they're taking great care of these animals. So like, it makes you feel better about the whole situation. One thing that has massively surprised me is the cars here. And when I say cars, I mean Teslas. The amount of them is absolutely ridiculous. Every second or third car that goes past you in the street is a Tesla. The place is just absolutely covered in them. And if it's not a Tesla, it's some other big swanky yoke. There's a lot of Porsches, a couple of Lamborghinis, a lot of Ferraris, a lot of Bentleys, Rolls Royce. It's a pretty swanky spot to say the least. So one of the main things to do here on Hong Kong Island is to get the tram that you can see right behind me and they go the whole way across the island so of course we're gonna go and jump on one. We've missed that one though. <laughs> There's plenty. We got the front seats. I was really hoping we would get the front seats but I wasn't sure if we were gonna get them or not and if I read the sign correctly on the way in it's only $3 each. Bargain. She wanted me to hammer Trying to get saved, baby, I am not the answer No, I can never trick on the front Plus the bitch is my with a kiss on my lips Like, oh. I am not a pimp with a lip I'm a man with a gift and I'm doing my shit like, Well, that was a super fun way to see the city We seen loads on that tram We were on it for probably over an hour To be honest with you To get to the next place we're going to go check out Which is pretty cool and unique And kind of different and strange but that was so much fun and it literally only cost us three dollars per person which is like 30 pence sterling for nothing lads and that location is the monster building and that is what you can see right behind me if you have ever typed into google hong kong you'll probably see this image it gives you the illusion that you're in like this walled in area and that's because it's made up of five different huge apartment blocks but what makes this area a little bit strange is People live in these. There's 10,000 people living in all of these different units and apartments, and they're all quite old, quite grubby, but yet it attracts thousands and thousands of tourists to come here and get an iconic picture right over there. It is very impressive and very cool to walk around, but yet it does feel very strange because there's obviously loads of people living here, just going about their daily lives. There's barbers, shops all around. There's rubbish absolutely everywhere. And then people are just squeezing in between to get that perfect image that you can't see any of it. We have just stopped off for another bite to eat and we've got another very popular and traditional dish here in Hong Kong, which is dim sum. Dim sum actually is like a Chinese dish and I believe the word dim sum doesn't mean one particular type of food, but rather a variety of different foods that are served in these very cute wee bamboo baskets. You get different things such as like meatballs, you get dumpling style foods, but it's something that a lot of people have here and you couldn't come to Hong Kong without trying. So we've got a wee variety of different ones to sample here this evening. It's nice. Time. This one, I actually can't even remember what it's called, but it's very sticky and it's quite large and weighty and heavy. But let's get into this. It feels like a sticky rice. It looks strange, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Lots of vegetables inside. Mm. Good. Yeah, so it's a steamed bun with lots of veg. I believe there's like a nut in it too. I think a few other flavours that I can't well. really taste, I can't I can't pin. But that is quite, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, I believe there might be a bit of chicken and a potato in that. But mm. that is really good. However, it's so sticky. <laughs> and I'm getting stuck into the meatball here, and it is a very, very good. Oh wow, that's really good. That's, good. <laughs> that's really good. 
after spending two full days exploring some of the best things Hong Kong has to offer, we quickly find ourselves falling in love with this city. It's also not as expensive as we initially thought. The city has tons of character, friendly people and great food. And we know for sure we will be back again. And if you're planning on visiting Hong Kong, to be honest, you're going to want to spend much more than just two days here.